Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm going to show you how to measure your brake pad thickness with this Rasta stick. <laughs> or the official term is a brake pad thickness measuring gauge or something like that. Um, anyway, why on earth would we want to do this? Aside from, of course, if we, you know, work in a dealership or an automotive repair shop and it's part of our job to tell our customers what the brake pad thickness is. Um, and you're probably wondering why we would do this because there are so many built-in ways that the vehicle is already going to warn us that our brake pads are low. For example, on my lovely 1998 Toyota 4Runner. Built into the actual reservoir on Grim Repo here, you can see the brake fluid level sensor. And you can find a similar design on older Toyotas too, like my 1989 Toyota Supra. Built into the brake fluid reservoir cap is this switch, which will turn on the brake light when the fluid in the reservoir goes to low. This is important because as your brake pads wear away, then that space that the caliper pistons need to reach the brake pads gets larger. So the brake fluid leaves the reservoir and goes down into the calipers and makes up that extra space basically. So your fluid being low would indicate that your brake pads are low, which would give you a warning light on your dash. Now, why does this not work in most situations? You go to the dealership or you go to an independent automotive repair shop to get your oil changed and they do a full service, which means topping off all your fluids. Most of the time, those oil change people don't necessarily know that the fluid level is really important and needs to maintain whatever it was at. <laughs> and also most of the time nowadays when technicians replace your brakes or even flush your brake fluid, they're not going to put it back to the level that it was at before they started the service or even, you know, if they replace the brakes and they didn't do, you know, they only did the front brakes and not the rear brakes or something like that, they're probably going to put the fluid level right up to the exact full level so you wouldn't get a great indication of what the brakes are all around anyway. So this is unfortunately not a good measuring technique anymore. We can't really trust this. Another way that you can tell that your brake pads are getting low is by listening for a sound on the squealer tab. Yes, this is built into most brake pads. And as you can see, the squealer tab extends beyond the backing plate and into the pad material area. So this basically will make a terrible noise when your pads are getting low. Not all vehicles have this though. Actually, some higher end vehicles like BMW and Mercedes, they will have a sensor built in, like an electronic sensor built into the pad itself. Now, there's several different problems with this, of course. This one comes right from the box. Da -da -da! with the squealer tab built in. Oh, freaking fantastic. These are great. Not all brake pads are like this though. Here's another box of brand new brake pads. And here we have, I mean, they're high-end brake pads. They're ceramic, beautiful brake pads, but none of these pads have the squealer tab automatically built in. So on this particular set of brake pads, they're relying on the mechanic to swap over the brake pad squealer tabs from your old brakes to your new brakes. I mean, look, this doesn't even come with a hardware kit. Like this is all that comes in there. So um, if the mechanic forgets and does not swap over the squealer tab from one to another, well, then what are you supposed to do? You can't really listen for that noise. So at that point, any noise you hear from your brakes is probably gonna be that squeal of like metal on metal when you don't have any pad material left. Now also there can also be the failure of the technician to put the squealer tab in the right place. Now on my brake calipers, we can see that there are caliper pistons on both the front and the rear of the caliper. Well, that's great because then when you hit the brakes, all the caliper pistons push out and put equal force on the inside and the outside pad. They're different pads, doesn't matter. Um, so the inside and outside pad are gonna wear a little bit more evenly than on a single piston caliper style that you find more on like smaller passenger cars, they're gonna have one piston on the inside part of the caliper and the outside pad is gonna be sort of free floating there. So in that case, the inside pad is gonna wear a heck of a lot earlier than the outside pad will be. So what would, what does that matter? Well, if the squealer tab is placed in the incorrect position on the outside pad, the inside pad's gonna wear sooner and you may have the inside pad being metal to metal when the outside pad still has enough life left that that squealer tab hasn't made any noise yet. So yeah, as you can tell, the human interference is kind of a big deal. Also on a lot of the newer style um, higher end vehicle brakes where there is that built in sensor, you can buy those brake pads without the sensor at all. So that's then up to the technician to swap the sensor over or install it properly with the right depth. So like human interference can really affect the vehicle's natural way to let you know that brake pads need to be replaced. Now, 
Just having low brake pads is not the only reason why your brakes need to be replaced. However, that's the only thing that I'm gonna cover in this video today because otherwise this video would be very long because brakes are very complicated. <laughs> for a simple system, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, and there was a lot for me to say without any of y'all giving me hell in the comments. So um, anyways, another reason why it's important to be able to measure your own brake pads is because Look at this lovely gauge. We have green, we have yellow, and we have red. Now, when do you think at the dealership it's safe for me to tell you that you need brakes? Well, the answer is when you're at the five millimeter mark. That was at my particular dealership when I was allowed to tell a customer that they needed brakes. Now, that's not necessarily what I wanted to do. I tend to like to warn customers when they actually are closer to really needing brakes, which is in this red level. But brakes pay really well, and they're really easy to do, and they're really fun, uh, I, I think. And they're kind of brainless, for the most part, if you've done them a lot and you, you're doing them over and over and over again. So really, technicians in dealerships and independent shops have every motivation to tell you that you need to replace your brakes at this point Whereas in reality, you could easily wait till down here, depending on the person and the driving style, so on and so forth. And also, not every single set of brakes starts out all the way here. Um, for example, on Toyotas, you've got the smaller passenger cars like a Prius or a Corolla. Their brake pads tend to start out at eight millimeters. Whereas you have a larger vehicle, a truck, so Tundra um, or Tacoma, you're gonna start out more around the 12 millimeter mark. So it's crazy to think that at eight millimeters or at 12 millimeters, that five millimeters is across the board a safe place for me to tell you that you need brakes. But yeah, a lot of people rely on their service advisors or their mechanics to tell them, hey, you need brakes. It's always good to be able to double check. That being said though too, the lower that your pad thickness gets, I mean, your brake pads and your rotors are also heat sinks. They also dissipate heat. So the smaller that the brake pads get or like the thinner that the brake pad material gets, the faster they, they do wear, that is true. So the lower you get down on the scale, the sooner you're gonna need to replace your brakes. Whoops, I did like a really bad job of explaining that. So um, future pay here to clarify what I meant. Basically the lower that your pads get, the less material that there is to dissipate heat. And so it takes less time, it takes fewer stops at this thickness to wear down a millimeter of brake pads than it does at say this thickness. That's what I meant. Sorry for that, carry on. Okay, so how does this brake pad thickness gauge work? So you wanna be careful that we're not measuring the backing plate. The backing plate does nothing but hold the friction material. <laughs> so um, we're gonna make sure that no matter what we do, these are brand new brake pads so we can sort of see where they start out. No matter what we do, our goal is to measure between the rotor, which is gonna sit right here, and the backing plate and that, that space in between. Now these are a chamfered brake pad. The thickness of the pad should be measured here and, and not on the edge there where the chamfer is. That just basically allows for less noise and uh, also dissipating of brake dust. So if I was to take my, my brake pad thickness gauge and, and measure there, I would see that this portion right here where the chamfered edge is measures at about seven and a half millimeters, but that's not the actual measuring of the brake itself. The actual brake pad itself is more like 10 millimeters. So that's how we're gonna be using this gauge. Now, how do we use that gauge on the vehicle? Well, as you can tell, this vehicle is kind of difficult to measure brake pad thickness on without taking the wheel off. That's because my spokes are kind of close together. It's hard to get my hand and the brake pad gauge in there. And then also the style of caliper that I have, it's really difficult to even like get the thickness gauge in there at all. So I take my wheel off and I measure from the back. Here are the brake pads. Here's the rotor. Let's see, I can turn that for you so you can see which one the rotor is. These are the backing plates and this is the pad material in the middle. So in order for me to measure my brake pad thickness, I will take the gauge and place it in between the backing plate and the rotor. And in this case, we can see that it's almost eight. <laughs> Not quite, but I don't have a seven. I only have a, a six. So, okay, and it's clearly, it looks like it's a seven and a half, doesn't it? <laughs> so, cool. And then what I would do is I would go around to every single brake pad and measure. See how this one's a little bit more? That one's a little bit more. So that one actually looks like eight, and that one's more like, more like seven. So they're not measuring perfectly evenly, but, uh, but they're close. 
There are other cars though where the spokes are really far apart, like on my Supra, and I can easily get my hand in there with the gauge in order to measure, and I don't have to take the wheel off at all. That being said, you always wanna make sure that you measure both the outside and the inside pad, because not only will that tell you whether or not you need brakes, but say that the inside and the outside pad thickness is like really, really different by like a couple of millimeters or more, then that can also indicate that you have more problems than just your brake pads being bad. Then maybe you have a sticking caliper or sticking caliper sliders. So uh, it's really good to do measurements of actually all four pads if you're gonna do a real good measurement of your front brakes, um, or, or I guess your your rear disc brakes. So we're talking about disc brakes here, um, not not shoes, not drum brakes, because shoes have a totally different measurement than than this. <laughs> so don't use this gauge on. I mean, you can use this this gauge on shoes, but you've got to be aware that the green, yellow, and red are are, are not gonna be accurate for shoes. And then there's a single piston caliper design, like what comes factory on my 1989 Toyota Supra. And you can see that actually in the front here, here's the brake pad. What I'm touching right here with my thumb, that's the backing plate. And it's just being held into place by the caliper here and the caliper bracket. The piston, which is actually doing the pushing, is right here. It's on the inside edge. So as you apply the brake pedal and that piston moves out, it's gonna be pushing against that inside pad first. So quite often on designs like this, they'll, they'll wear mostly evenly, but you'll find more often than not, uh, not all, not all, not all, but most of the wear is going to occur on that inside pad first. So sometimes on the caliper, there is a little window you can look through to see how much the brake pad has worn. And we can actually see that right here. It's a little hard to see, but um, that actually is the brake pad right there. And I can measure that. This is three millimeters. And once again, I'm just placing that in between the caliper. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness. That does not fit either. Oh, actually, no, it barely fits right. Oh no, it doesn't. I'm, I'm making it up there. All right, and two millimeters. We're gonna try for two millimeters. And all right, two millimeters fits between the rotor and the backing plate. So that's the pad material that I have on the inside pad. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then awesome. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, maybe consider subscribing if you want to. And uh, yeah, I will see you in a future video. All right, bye.